Okay, we've fallen overboard from a vessel and then the call goes on out that somebody had fallen off a vessel and the last time they seen this person was approximately 15 minutes ago. The person went back aft and usually and a lot of times out in the boat when somebody has to go to the bathroom, they just go to the back of the stern and just go ahead and urinate and let it go. And so the person went back aft there and hasn't been seen. It's been a half hour now. And they said, well, where, where is he? And so the call goes out, somebody's fallen overboard and it happened about so-and-so and you were fishing, so you're going slow. And then a half hour, you were only doing a knot or two. So the person should be within a mile or two of you. And that, so <clears throat> the call goes out. We're in a 40 footer. So we go to the scene and we start what we call a search pattern. And there's different search patterns you can use, but we try to cover as much of the area in as short a time as possible going back and forth. We have what we call ladder searches and box searches. And so, and then we had what we call a, a helter skelter search where other boats are just running all over and because we got help coming. So we call that a helter skelter search and we're doing a regular command search. And if I find a tide rip or a tide line where two currents have come together, I will get on that tide current and I'll follow that because that's where the person's going to be. And this is what happened. We picked up the, we picked the person up out of the water. Now he's been in the water approximately, oh, 35, 40 minutes. And he's got pretty well into hypothermia, but he's still conscious and, and can talk, but kind of a slurred speech. We picked the person on up. And as I say, we try to get him up horizontal, but it's pretty hard on the boat. And it wasn't really rough out. Uh, like a person in capsized or so. So anyway, we get the person on board, we get him back and, and this particular vessel was a 44 footer. We had uh, what we call the after turtle. It was a covered area, uh, watertight aft and had two benches in it. And we could lay the person on down in there. And that, so we take them back, strip them on down, cover them with blankets. And as long as they're talking, we're, we're fine and we're getting, there and we didn't go chest to chest there because the person was still uh, fairly, fairly good conscious, especially being in the water that long. But it was a little chilly that morning when they went out. So he was double blanketed in clothes. He had on his t-shirt, he had on underwear, he had on another uh, wool, nice wool shirt on and he had heavy duty pants on and he had a, a light jacket and he had a big rain uh, jacket over the top of it. So he, he had layers of clothes. He had all the protection that he should have had in that situation. So he was really in good shape, even though he was, he was still down and out. And don't let him move. So we, we did not let them move. And several times he would went, just stay down. We don't want you moving. It's very important that you don't move. And so we have a half hour run or better into the dock so where the ambulance was and it had the hospital right there three miles away and uh, we notify them so they can be all set up to take care of a hypothermia person and so all the way in we're talking to him and keeping on do not rub the person you think that you see that a lot of times they've got the person they start to rub them right away you know and the person they say his legs are bent up or his arms bent up and it's kind of there don't grab the arm and start to say oh yeah you can tear the ligaments there in the or the tendons in the arm and do permanent damage to them. Let him keep his arm up. Try it. You might try it. Say, can you move your arm? No, no, I can't move it. Don't. Fine. Leave it right there. Don't move it. And so all the way in, this person and he's getting warmer now. And that, and of course, halfway in, he says, "Can I have a cigarette?" And of course, his are all wet that he had. And I said, no, nobody smokes here. And besides, you can't have a cigarette. It's one of the worst things you can do. Is to, you need all the fresh oxygen you can get into your lungs. And you don't need them full of smoke. I said, this is a good time to quit smoking. And he kind of laughed. So as long as that kind of 
doing this and we get him to the dock and put him in the ambulance and he goes and that's the last time we ever hear of him. We might check sometimes and say, oh, they do him. This particular person was doing uh, pretty well at the time. So it's important that you don't rub the person. One of the things that can happen on land particular is a person is out and it's very cold and they walking around and they don't realize it until pretty soon they said, gee, I can't walk as good as I can. And they start getting frostbite to the toes and maybe their fingers, maybe they had gloves on so their fingers are pretty good, but their toes are, their feet got cold again and they got frostbit on there. And what it is kind of a prickly thing and it feels kind of prickly on them and that, but their toes were, were numb and that. And so you take the shoes off and you start, you do not rub, you do not rub the person. And that. And then frostbite, you warm it fairly fast in that as they got frostbite and let's say it's like your, your fingers or, or your toes and it's up to here on there, you want to stop it because it keeps creeping and the longer it takes to get it for, it's going to keep creeping and doing more damage to more tissues. So if you can get this part here warm and stop that from creeping on up the body, that's very important, particularly if you have a long time to get them to a facility where they can take care of this. And you've got to be very careful on, on treating it. If you see blisters, do not, do not try to pop the blisters. You can cover them with a gauze uh, pattern if you have one there or a light, very light, white, usually white is good because you don't want uh, fabric that is tinted to get into anything that could go get into the body. So you cover them, cover them on up until you can get them to a proper facility to take care of there. One of the things <clears throat> that happened, particularly during World War I, was they had what they called trench foot. Now trench foot is where people who were men at that time, all men, uh, were in the trenches and their feet got wet and they didn't have that good of boots and shoes and that so your feet were always wet. If, you, if you've ever been in a bathtub, I remember when we were kids we used to take baths uh, all the time when we'd like to play in the bathtub and we'd be in there maybe half hour or better and we'd say oh look at here I'm turned into an old person because your fingers would start to wrinkle up because they'd get warm in the water and then I'm turned into an old person look at here and we'd play that. Uh, well what happens is you're exactly in it happened in trench foot, that's what happens. Your, your, your main part of your hand starts to wrinkle on up and the, the tissue starts to go. You're actually soaking the, the tissue until you can rub it and the skin will come off. Well, in trench foot, you can take your foot and take a handful. So if you're out in a, in a boat or if you're out someplace and your posterior, your butt gets all soaking wet, and that, and you sit down in it, and you're sitting in it for an hour or two, and you, pretty soon you feel your butt kind of getting numb, and you wonder why it's getting numb. Well, you're actually getting, not trench foot, you're getting trench ass. And you can actually take, a, and a good thing, you can take your hand and go back there and take a handful, and you'll get actually get skin, and that will, will come off of your hand as you rub it. So if you get somebody that's got in that type of condition, Handle them very, very carefully. Do not rub. Take it very careful on putting something over that area that usually is white and you have gauze package and you have first aid kits with you. That's what you do. It's one of the things that goes along with hypothermia in that. And if you've got a person that you find and they have uh, frostbite, fingers, ears, anything, uh, get them out of the element as soon as possible and get them to a, a medical facility as soon as they can so they can take proper care to save as much of the person's uh, extremities as, as they can. Sometimes you have to remove them. On, up in uh, Alaska, on the big mountain up there, they uh, had a place at the 10,000 foot level where they would take people that were rescued and bring them down and they'd have frostbite a very bad to the feet. They would not take their boots off because they'd start to swell on that. They might loosen them on up, but they would have to walk them down to where they could get a, a facility. So if they're really bad, 
and you have a proper way to move them. Don't take your shoes and that off right away because uh, it will swell up. And so you got to walk them out, particularly in cold areas where there's a lot of snow or a lot of ice and that. You got to walk them out until you get to a proper uh, facility. And that goes in you. If you've got somebody that's got frostbite, you've got to presume that they're going to have hypothermia along with it. Just presume it and take care of them in that type of manner.